The next part of using our guide sheets is to move on to the practice sheets. It's like having a warm up, so we want to stretch it out a little bit. And we want to make sure you're really comfortable in how you maneuver or move your fabric around on the sewing machine. So we're going to use paper. I'm going to take my scissors and here's our guide sheet over here. You'll see there's a little bit of a cutting line. We're going to follow the cutting lines, cut it apart and collect your practice sheets and we're going to put them on the sewing machine. There are two different types of practice sheets. We have a beginner practice sheet and we have an intermediate practice sheets. The beginner practice sheets will have straight lines as seen here and it's going to have pivot lines. The intermediate practice sheets will have straight lines, the pivot lines, and the squiggly lines. We're going to go ahead and start with the straight lines. The first bullet point here tells us to sew without thread in our sewing machine. We have our sewing machine set up over here and we're going to put it underneath our presser foot. We're going to line our presser foot up with the first straight line. I always like to make sure most of my paper and or fabric is on the left hand side of the machine so it doesn't get too bunched up on the right hand side. Next thing we're going to go ahead and do is put down our presser foot. And that's going to hold our paper, but usually our fabric, in place. The next thing we want to do is we want to take the hand wheel and put the needle into the paper or usually the fabric. I'm going to turn the wheel. And by placing the needle into the paper or fabric beforehand, it allows us to make sure it's going to end up in the right place. I'm right there on the line. And that's looking great. You want to make sure your stitches are set up properly. We're going to be using a two and a half and we're going to be on letter A for a straight stitch. When you're ready, you want to gently step on the pedal. Usually, the harder you step on the pedal, the faster it's going to go. So lightly step on the pedal so it doesn't start off too fast. Here we go. We made it to the end of our first line. I'm going to go ahead and lift up the presser foot. The good news is the needle's already out of the paper. So here we go, lift up our presser foot. Oh, it looks like the needle's still in there a little bit, so that means I need to move my hand wheel up and out of the way. And we can see, if you look at the back of my paper, you can see the little holes that have pushed into the paper and it's fairly straight. So that means I was pretty good at keeping on the straight line. So that's all about control. You want to practice this a couple of times, so you're going to go over and move to the next line. As you get comfortable, I like to throw in a back stitch. A back stitch is going to be very important to your sewing so that you make knots when you begin and when you end, and so your stitching doesn't come undone. So we're going to go ahead and line that up. I'm going to place my needle down. I'm going to come forward, and it's going to be like a little dance. So I'm going to come forward three stitches. One, two, two, three. I'm going to push my reverse stitch or my back stitch button it's going to go over one two three i'm going to stop and then we're going to come all the way down my line stop and we're going to do a reverse one two three stop and then one two three and now we've completed our second line with a back stitch in the beginning and end I recommend using all these lines just to make sure you feel really comfortable in sewing in a straight line since it's really important for most of our beginner patterns. Our next sheet we're going to start with is our practice sheet for pivot lines. This is in both the beginner and intermediate pattern. Pivot lines you'll see looks a little bit like a maze and what we want to work on is getting into these corners and making sure we make nice 90 degree angles. That's what these corners are called, 90 degree ang angles. And the way we're going to do that is by sewing and doing a pivot. Let's go ahead and line up our presser foot right where the start is. We're going to put our presser foot down. We are going to do this practice sheet without thread as well. And we're going to go ahead and do our 
reverse stitch in the beginning just to get started for uh, a good best practice. So here we go. One, two, three. Let's reverse. One, two, three. And we're going to follow our line to the first corner. When we get just about to the first corner, I like to stop. I don't like to stop right at the first corner because sometimes that's hard to do. Now you can see my needle is not in the paper. And what you have to make sure when you do a pivot is that your needle is down into the paper or your fabric. So I'm going to turn my hand wheel and my needle is now down into the paper. If you feel that you're still too far away from the other line, you can always do another manual turn of the hand wheel and get down in that corner. So now that my needle's down, I'm going to lift up my presser foot. I'm going to swing it to the next direction that we need to go in. Once we're going in the right direction, we are going to put the presser foot back down and continue on our merry way to the next corner. Okay. So I'm just about the next corner. You can see my needle is already in the paper. I'm going to go ahead and just do an extra stitch here just to get me a little bit closer. So now that's right into the corner and you guys might be able to guess what I'm about to do. I'm going to lift up the presser foot, turn to the next direction, and put my presser foot down. And you're going to continue all the way around until you get to the end. So sewing pivots it's really important when you're doing square types of sewing. So a good example is when you sew a pillow. And this is going to help keep your corners really nice and crisp. So make sure you get all the way to the end and give yourself that opportunity to practice this really well. All right, great job. Curvy line practice sheet will be found in your intermediate patterns. You're going to start this practice sheet like you've been using your other practice sheets without threading your sewing machine. We're going to go ahead and put this under your presser foot. Remember to keep the paper on the left hand side. And the purpose of this is to have control when you're sewing along these squiggly curvy lines. And so I think of it as like a really windy road and you don't want to fall off the road, okay? So I'm going to put down my presser foot. I'm going to put my needle into the paper to make sure it's on the line. I'm going to start with a back stitch here. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. And the key to being successful with these curvy lines is to go slow and make sure your hands can keep up with the pace of how the sewing machine is moving. Okay, so here we go. When you get to the end, we're going to go ahead and back stitch. One, two, three, one, two, three. And move on to the next one and do it again. Keep practicing until you feel really pretty comfortable. It's okay not to be perfectly on the line. The goal is to make sure you have that control. Most of the time you're not going to be sewing projects with these really curvy lines, but what we want to make sure you can do is have your hands keep up with the speed of the sewing machine. All right, so we'll go ahead and do one more. stitch. So take it out. And because this is a really tricky practice sheet, if you find that you're ripping the paper, don't be afraid to take another piece of computer paper and draw your own curvy lines to continue practicing. All right, great job.